Welcome back to the Wingspan Podcast, episode 46. I'm Doug Barak, joined by my co-host Chris Mahal and Ned Staley, and our special guest, he's an NBA reporter for Ned Staley and host of Basketball More YouTube series. We got Matt Brooks in the house. Thank you t- for taking some time every day. Join Doug and I. What's going on, bro? Hanging out. Hanging out after a, a beautiful basketball game. Just majestic. Chef's kiss. That was that was it right there. That was the pinnacle of Nets basketball against the Lakers. <laughs> Nothing more to say there. But anyways, uh, so since your last appearance on the podcast, the Brooklyn Nets have put together a super team. They traded for James Harden and signed both Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Saltridge, who, depending on the game, is either a washed or a steal. And how do they get all these great talent? Or, no, washed again. So let's let's talk about the impact of these players. Let's start with Nets newcomer LaMarcus. What are your thoughts upon his debut, and what are your expectations going forward after we've seen a few games? Yeah, no, I, I don't have a full grip on him defensively yet. Like, I understand they're probably going to play him. I mean, actually, I know for a fact they're going to play him in that drop coverage where he's far back in the paint, kind of what we saw with DeAndre and Jared Allen, especially um, under Kenny. So I think he's limited in a lot of ways on that end of the floor. Um, I I think the thing that we'll learn and I, I, in the next couple of weeks is how he's going to guard those bigger centers. So you know, coming off today, you're going to see that you know, Andre Drummond kind of took it to him, was taking it, you know, just I, I don't feel like LaMarcus's center of gravity really helps him in those matchups against like the Embiid's, the Drummond's of the world. So I think that's what we're going to learn over the next couple of weeks. Offensively, it makes a lot of sense. Um, can pick and pop space the floor. You can post him up if you have a mismatch. And then that sort of forces rotations around that. So I like it on offense. Um, the defense is really TBD, and with how many players they have, there's going to be opportunity costs. And I, I think, like, ultimately, I think he's going to be a little bit more of, like, a matchup guy. Like, you'll know when you can play him and when you can't. Yeah, very fair. And what are your thoughts about Blake Griffin? How did you feel to see him get that first dunk? <laughs> uh, well, I, I – because I'm addicted to Twitter, I, I was like, oh, this is going to be everywhere. That's where my brain goes. <laughs> but – um, I think Blake's been good. Like he, he can do a little bit of everything, which is kind of fun. Um, the, the thing I've really liked is like, obviously we know what he can do on offense. It's nice that the three point shooting is translated at least thus far. That was going to be my biggest question with him. We know what he can do otherwise offensively. He's a good passer. He can post up and do <laughs> those weird over the wrong shoulder post ups that he's been doing forever. But the defense is where I was really like, Oh, this is interesting. Like you can use him in a couple of different coverages I wouldn't say he's like spectacular, but he knows the coverages and he knows where to be. And I think that in that sense, it's a pretty interesting signing. He can just he can do a little bit of everything. It's it's a good it's a good tool to have in, in your toolbox if you're Steve Nash. Yeah, no, I've definitely been impressed by his passing. I, I would say it's LeBron esque, especially with those one handed, like very difficult angled passes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those um, are crazy. Those yeah, are crazy. and then him taking a charge. I, I, he, what is he? The top five, top three active top three. players. Yeah, he's top it's three insane, now. Like, dude. Like, no wonder why the dude's so banged up. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. He, uh, I mean, he's just like again. He knows the coverages, so the the charges come from him knowing when he's supposed to help over. Like, he just has these help rotations, and I think that that's something you find with this Nets team. No, they're not. And I think actually Landry Shamit said this the other day about Kyrie. They're not really, you know, Kyrie's not going to be like a stopper but he knows where to be. Like he's always in the right place. And I think that kind of applies to this whole Nets team. Um, It's just a group of guys. Like when they're feeling it, they're in the right places. They're early. Um, And I think that's kind of like Blake is a great example of that. Yeah. And lastly, James Harden. So what have been your thoughts? Has anything about his game surprised you? And well, I guess this is really sad question, but uh, where do you see him finishing in the MVP voting? Oh man, that's a million dollar question. Um, depends how long he's out. I, that's such a bad answer, but it really does. You uh, know, I know it, it really screwed over my question when I wrote this. <laughs> it, I, I mean, it's still a really good question because everybody it feels like has missed time. So you know, you look at all these guys like it was LeBron and Jokic and 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 uh, and Embiid at the beginning of the year. Now two of those three have missed time. James Harden comes up, he gets injured. It's just such a weird year, and it's like. I almost feel like we're going to come down to Giannis and Jokic just because they haven't yeah. gotten hurt this year. 
it's like the weirdest way to come into an MVP, but I kind of feel like that stuff should matter a little bit. I think you, especially with this year, like kind of feels like it's, it's Jokic's award. I oh, guess that, the beginning. Yeah. It's like, and, and, and Embiid had a good little run, but he just, he got hurt. And I think that stuff matters. And, you know, you look at Embiid, he's slowed down a little bit. Um, you know, the, the jumpers haven't been falling as much. I do wonder if we get that with, with Harden. Um, hamstrings are just so tricky. I, I wonder what it's going to look like when he comes back. Um, you know, he obviously left such a good, you know, like a, I guess a good last performances. Like he was really solid until he got injured, but I don't know what it's going to look like after. So, yeah, I, I, it feels like Jokic's award. And I think Giannis is creeping up. Like he's, he's going to be in the mix. It'll just be a question of people can get over the playoff burnouts and, and want to give somebody like a third straight uh, MVP. Yeah, no, definitely. And what are some of the other things that really you've enjoyed about Harden's game, like development with the um, team at least? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it's been kind of covered, like the that he's doing less of the isolation work, more in pick and roll. Kind of reminds you of Harden when he really first got going um, in Houston. But what I like is he's just like a floor raiser. Like, I, you know, you look at it, you see the Rockets, they're at 50 wins every year. And it's like, oh, yeah, like this is what Harden does. But you kind of see it in person. You're like, wow, this is crazy. Like this team just – they don't – like you look at what happened yesterday. I bet you if you put James Harden in that game, they win that game. They might win by 10. Like that's just what he does. And I think for as great as Durant and Kyrie are, I don't know if you get that like this – this they just – you know, this guy Harden doesn't lose games. Like he doesn't lose regular season games. And that's what's so interesting about him. And um, I just wasn't sure if we were going to see that, given how talented this team is. But it's it's very evident that like he's a big reason why they're playing well and, and playing as well as they have in the regular season. Yeah, and what do you think about his impact on coaching on the sidelines? Like Fans used to clown like DJ getting a sideline talk from Harden, but he's doing it on a regular basis with yeah. almost every player. So what are your kind of thoughts behind that? And what do you think the kind of things he might be saying to his teammates are? Yeah, the the DJ thing's funny because everybody's all everybody's saying, "Oh, this this would be a good DJ game," and like bringing him up. I'm like, didn't you guys just like completely ether this guy for two months, and now it's like the Nets are losing, and Lamarcus doesn't look great, and it's like, oh, we should put DJ. I don't know. That's a different. That's a different topic for a different day. I think it's good. Like, I think that there's something to that. Like, he just he doesn't like to lose. He's incredibly competitive. It's why he plays through like every injury possible. He just. It, he doesn't he doesn't want to lose regular season games it's something that's very important to him so because of that i think that translates in his discussions in you know maybe he's having that guy he's pulling that guy aside you know if if you know he misses let's say three straight threes he's going to be the guy to do that and maybe you don't get that with him there so i think that's really important i think those things like yeah they're cliche and it's like you know it it, it feels kind of like a sports movie being like well you know we're we're communicating and we're having, you know, all this dialogue during the game. But, like, that stuff really is important. I think he's, like, he's just been the the the, the leader of that for the Nets this year. Yeah, and do you think the injury could be a blessing in disguise, potentially giving his legs back to hitting threes again? Because he's been uh, pretty low lately. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, you know, it. it I, mean, I guess we'll see that. I mean, KD didn't really have a huge workload prior to getting hurt. So I think Harden will be a better test case of that. But, yeah, I can see it working that way. You kind of... You look at the minutes, and I get it. Like they want to win games, I understand kind of that theory in a lot of ways. But I do think there's some give or take, and we're kind of seeing that. Like I don't, I, I wouldn't say it's an it's a complete coincidence that they've had two of their three best players go down with hamstring injuries, and there's been pretty crazy workloads with, you know, some inconsistencies in terms of Harden shows up halfway through the season or not really halfway, like really closer to a fourth of the way through the season. But he shows up, hasn't probably not in the shape that he wants to be, and they kind of ramp him up that way pretty aggressively. I don't know. I I, I just I, I don't think it's a coincidence is what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, so do you think there might be a chance or maybe no chance at all of uh, playoff burnout Harden? I could see it. I, like, even look at DeAndre. Like, I, I know that DeAndre was – a lot of it feels like it's effort, but I actually, I do wonder like, man, if they ever break him out again, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he looks a little bit more rejuvenated. Um, DeAndre's yeah, played a lot of minutes. DeAndre's played a lot of minutes. I completely agree. I There's bet we see that with Lamar. Attacker, all that energy, like kind of Blake Griffin, I think part of that attributed to his injuries is he went always so hard to the paint. 
and because he's a bigger guy, it's not like Westbrook, smaller frame. Yep. It's it's like um, when I think of animals, you know, the bigger animals are the ones that always get those really strong injuries yeah. because of all that extra weight. And I know it's a weird comparison. I just think of dogs compared to everything in life. Yep. Um, but potentially with all this extra rest, we should hopefully see a better DeAndre Jordan. I don't want to put if that in stone. Him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, these DMPs after a while are kind of... Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, Steve Nash said it best, but also at the same time, it's kind of like a slap in the face to some of those guys who haven't got those minutes, and he says he deserves them. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about those guys, but hopefully we get to see more than six full games of the big three before the playoffs. Just yeah. get a taste of it. Yeah, I even, like... I don't know. You got Blake. I, they're, I think they're resting Blake a little bit more. But even with Lamarcus, I'm like, look, man, the guy hasn't played in a month. You're throwing him out there for I don't know what he played thirty minutes yesterday. Like that's a lot of time to throw a thirty five year old center out there who was, you know, largely looking pretty washed. Man, he's in not, San he's not a cardio player. He's not like LeBron who can run the court. Nah, like it's Giselle, awkward. Like, he's always even in his prime. It's like you watch him play basketball and you're he's like, not that's a fast player. It looks like it hurts straight up. If you're watching him play, I'm like, man, this looks like this looks arduous as, as hell. Like this is crazy. So, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, that's if, if I can pick out one thing this year and there really haven't been many, I would probably say it's the not minutes distribution, but just like, I, I, it seems like they want, and even with Katie yesterday, it's like, you know, we want to ramp them up, slowly get them back. Nope, he's just playing in the fourth quarter with like five minutes left. You know, they're down twenty. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Like what yeah, happened to the ramp up? Eighteen minutes heading to the fourth. It, it's a weird balance. Like sometimes the way yeah. they play, like you had only two superstars available. One, but I'll let Chris handle that question about Steve Nash. All right, yeah, you kind of just cut out there for like five seconds, but I think I know where you come from. All right, but something me and Matt always talk about, if not daily. That's in the development, right? So when you look at Matt, when you look at Steve, right? So we've we've seen the growth over the years. So how? What are your feel what, like when you evaluate him from like day one on the job to 19 games left in the regular season? Kind of what's like that big growth of improvement that like you see right off the bat? Comfortability has to be, um, and and confidence too. I just feel like when he makes decisions, he doesn't really. It, it doesn't feel like he gets as flummoxed if they don't go well. Um, and I think that's been the big thing for him. And I, I, I do wonder, it just seems like he's, you can see it when he explains things after games and like when he's explaining what happens on an inbound or something like that, you see all the thought process. Mm-hmm. Like it's clearly, he understands the game. He sees things four steps ahead. It makes sense. You watch him play basketball. It's like this guy's, it's like he can see the future basically. So I think that's really translated. It's just all been about, the confidence and the comfortability to apply that. And I think that's been the big thing here. He's really good at like, I, I mean, just the way they've, they've evolved along the way. I, I love that they've been changing the lineups kind of throughout the year. I think that's really smart and it prepares your team for adjusting in the middle of a series. You know, if you're like, let's say you're the Bucks and you change your starting lineup, you've never done that throughout the year, or at least in previous years. I actually think that can really kind of, shake things up chemistry wise. Maybe guys are not used to playing together. It's just, it's kind of hard if you're rigid about stuff like that. I mean, you can use Kenny for an example as well, Um, which, you know, I mean, Kenny has his pluses, Kenny has his minuses, like every coach. Uh, But yeah, no, I think that that stuff's really smart. I like the way that he adjusts the offense um, to his personnel. I think I'm due on doing something, a video or something like that on the, uh, on the playbook because it's changed quite a bit since we first started. So I've been impressed with the malleability, but the big thing is just that comfortability. He's he just like seems like he knows what he's doing now. Mm-hmm. When you brought a playbook, anything you want to see them implement? Less floppy. Yeah, <laughs> they run floppy for Landry Sham, and I think they've made one three off that all year. It's I that's a little nitpick that nobody's going to care about it. There's going to be it probably doesn't even matter in the grand scheme of things. Now a playbook makes sense. I mean, you know, I think the big thing for them will be, and this isn't really necessarily related to calling sets or anything like that. Um, the give or take of playing big, you know, I think it has its pluses. I do think it has its minuses. I think small ball has a place and it's all about getting that balance and feeling that out. You know, you can play big, but if it's not going well, I do think there's a time when you should say, yeah, let's try to like, you're playing the Lakers yesterday, you know, and, and they're playing big and it's like, I don't, 
I don't really actually feel like you're beating them in this game. Like you maybe, I mean, they, the problem is they have guys injured and Harden would help in that sense and Tyler Johnson. But yeah, I think like playing smaller might be <laughs> like, you just try to outscore him. You try to get on the board like that. Um, so yeah, I think there's give or take with everything. That would be the big thing for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously we're at that weird point of the season where fan favorites don't matter that much. It's more kind of like, all right, let's just get the one seed or however you kind of want to weigh it out. Yeah. But who are some of your fan favorites? Obviously, you know, Claxton's up there, but outside of like him, who would you kind of see as like players that kind of like risen in the fan base a little bit over this past couple stretches? <laughs> I mean, if it's not Claxton, I feel like Landry Shaman's getting some love lately, which is mm-hmm. cool because he uh, came into the year just not sharp. And now it's like this guy's hitting everything. He's hitting like 28 foot bombs. I'm like, all right, Landry Shamit. Um, <laughs> So that's cool. I, another guy too, like Tyler Johnson seems to be yeah. somebody that people really, really resonate with. And I think for good reason, you know, there's an obvious history there. He was almost a net before and he joins this bubble team. And let's be honest, like a lot of the bubble was largely pretty meaningless, like it, it, in the grand scheme of things. But I actually think unearthing him in that, in that developmental setting is pretty cool that that's translated. And he's actually, I mean, he said it himself, like this is, the most consistent he's ever been as a player. So I, I like him a lot. I, I just think he's got like a good, it, he just seems really um, comfortable with, with the season that he's had. And he should, I mean, he's been very good this year. So Claxton's the obvious one though. I, I can't, I can't pick any, you know, niche picks. Like that's who it is right, right there. <laughs> All right. But let's, let's dive into Claxton. So obviously like we've talked, I guess through, like throughout the season. Right. So my, my observations covering him in Long Island, your observations covering him in Brooklyn, you know, obviously more defensive than anything. But what are your overall thoughts this year just on Claxton in general? You know, like, has his development surprised you at all? So that kind of growth, to, like, with the limited NBA games of experience? I think he's up to, like, high 30s in NBA games right now for his career. Yeah, no, I mean, the switching is the obvious thing. Uh, I also was a little surprised he's looked less polished on offense than I remember um which is interesting i feel like he was better at the sort of you know over the shoulder turnaround game like or not really turnaround but the uh i guess like running hook game i just thought that he was better at that last year on the flip side you see that he can switch and he had a couple possessions i remember last year people were going crazy over him um like locking up i think it was devin booker in like a 30 point blowout and it's kind of funny you look at that moment I brushed it off. I was like, all right, like it's 30 point blow. <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing here? And that actually was a kind of a preview of like what he can do and his biggest skill and why he's getting minutes on a team that could win a championship. So that skill is, it's huge. Like you hear all the time about how the Nets, oh, they need a big wing. You know, they don't have anybody to, and I, guarding LeBron. It's a little rich for me. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. LeBron's just so strong. Same with Kawhi. But you get a guy who can, yeah, this is a guy you can maybe put on Tatum for a couple possessions. You can put him on some of these guards that are going to give you a little bit of trouble. Um, you know, if the East doesn't have as many, it's actually a little bit of a bigger conference, but you do have a guy that you can really throw him on uh, opposing teams creator. And it's like, you really have something here. So that's cool. And I, you, it's so obvious that that's going to translate to the playoffs. Um, I understand why people are saying, oh, well, he's raw. You worry about this. You worry about that. I get that Like, there's certain things that he does in his game that are not polished. And, yeah, he'll have a game where he'll get dusted by Dennis Schroeder. But you look at the, the overall product, that's, a, that's one game out of however many he's played now where he's been extremely, extremely sound in terms of isolation situations, but also as a health defender. Like, he's, a, he's everywhere. This guy is everywhere on the court. So mm-hmm. I've been so impressed with him. Um, just, uh, uh, the defensive IQ is insane for his age and he's a yeah. ridiculous athlete, but the, the IQ I think is what really kind of goes under the radar in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And you brought up that perimeter presence. Do what? So obviously last night, Dan Schroeder, we saw it, whatever the case is, but why do you think guards kind of still go for the attack when they're switched on clacks more so than kind of. You could you could wait out, you know. Obviously, not a lot of NBA experience could be a little down on the scouting report, film rooms, and stuff like that. But why do you think they still have that mindset of okay? I think I have an upper edge here. Teams are starting to go away from it, which is interesting. Like you saw Zach Levine want absolutely nothing to do with yeah. with uh, 
I mean, that's Zach Levine. Like, <laughs> this is not somebody that, like, can't – like, he is a bucket. I mean, he really is. I know people – that's, like, a meme on Twitter, but he is legitimately a bucket. Play. Like, and he's quick. He's explosive. Like, that's that's a hard matchup for just about anybody. Um, you know, but, yeah, I think with him, like, it's it, it still happens. Like, it's – you know, you're – on a pick and roll you're you're gonna i mean for the lakers especially yesterday your two best players are at point guard and center so you're gonna run a pick and roll and what comes out of that sometimes is you have a switch with a guard against claxton and like you, you yeah. <laughs> inherently because you have that matchup whether it's a good idea or not i think many times guards would be like oh cool like i, I guess we don't have the matchup down low because usually the nets will switch out of that on like other side rotations but a guard sees that and says, great, like, let's do this. I'm going to go try to cook this guy. And it largely has not been a factor. I mean, it just was surprising to see that yesterday, I think, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then, well, what, put it this way. When you see Claxton, right, obviously the defense is kind of, at least in my opinion, something that's more of a potential side more than offense. Because obviously we've seen it. He's got the best defensive rating on the team, especially for his age, like we just talked about and stuff. But what part of his game do you expect to kind of evolve in the remainder of this season that you think will surprise a couple people? Uh, the rebounding. I mean, that's the easy answer, but the rebounding has been insane lately. Um, I did a video, what was that, two, three days ago? And I, I found great a graph. Video, great video. Appreciate it. Uh, I did Kevin Durant's favorite thing and dug up a, a graph of rebounding. And, uh, and it was kind of astounding. Like, I don't – I'm actually in the camp where I don't love graphs all the time. I think sometimes people can get – too. I just – that's not how I learn. I don't see a graph and I'm like, oh, I understand exactly what's going on here. I dug up this graph of his uh, offensive rebounding rates. And I was like, this is insane. Like you literally, it's, it's damn near a straight line. I mean, it's, it's got a little bit of fluctuation, but he's improving every single game, which is so interesting. Like that there's no dips or anything like that, you know, because you might have a matchup where maybe the team's a little bit bigger. They have guys that are, you know, crashing the glass a little bit harder doesn't matter it's improved every single game so that's the easy answer but i i think it's the right answer right now um and I, I, it may be that you know i know he, he uh he hit a couple hook shots yesterday got to see it more than one game lefty personally lefty too. yeah yeah helpful. he's a lefty he's got a nice little game there but if, if he can slow down on those a little bit and kind of get his body set and make sure i mean a he's just got to play through contact a little bit better but b just make sure he's fully aligned before he gets into those shots i think that would be the other like a little bit of growth for him, which would be huge. But um, yeah, right now the, the safe answer is the uh, offensive rebounding. Yeah, I think uh, just talking a little bit about class, I think a lot of people are like kind of just overlooking the mental block of injuries for young players, right? Yeah. So see with Clax and like obviously me and you are on the calls and stuff. We see how like um, just over time, like the struggles mentally he went with, just like going, okay, shoulder surgery, he's back, hamstring, knee, you know, just. The, the list goes on just being injured. So I feel like that playing through contact thing, it's going to be like more of a mental thing, you know, because it's come from a mental block. He doesn't want to get re-injured. He doesn't want to go through all that, pro that just everything in general. So I think that, that weighs into it a little bit too. But to move on to like who I find is like kind of the, that interesting player for the Nets, and especially future-wise, right, is Bruce Brown. Obviously, he's eligible for extension. The, the money is going to be interesting to see what gets tossed his way. But – have you like what kind of stands out to you about his skill set? You know, because in the beginning he was kind of like that that floater guy, that kind of just you know he kind of floated around, very op opportunistic player. But what kind of stands out to you now that kind of like we've seen the talent that's on the team with Blake and Lamarcus, we've seen kind of his roles kind of adjust a little bit. So what kind of stands yeah. out to you with that skill set? Uh, I like him a lot more with Harden in the lineup. Personally, yeah. um, I just you know Harden's passing. That's one of those guys like. He's going to hit him on the screws at the perfect time on those short rolls. Mm -hmm. And that's just so important because, um, you know, largely it's not a huge offensive threat. You know, maybe yeah. he'll cut in from the, you know, from those, the, the, I guess from the three kind of right through the paint. He'll get a couple of those. But, you know, how many times are you getting those a game? Uh, what, two, three times maybe? And, and I don't know if those are always going to work. But if you have somebody like Harden who's making those reads and, and hitting him early, um, I, I think he's he just looks better in that way. Otherwise, he's great. I mean, the point of attack defense is nice. He's not – I think there's a misconception a little bit about, like, what type of a defender he is. Um, he's not, like, a lockdown, like, Tony Allen guy. But he's somebody that, like, 
he'll push the the offensive player to the double team. Like the, he'll push him into the help defender, which I think is cool. I like watching that style of defense. I think it's um it's just kind of understated. It's a challenge for me to watch too because you know when you're watching, you're inherently just looking for the stop. You're not really thinking about the scheme and where what he's trying to make the other guy do. You're just sort of looking for the result, I guess, not the process. So he's great. I mean, he's he's a great player. I just I'm curious to see what it looks like. I don't know what his role is going to be like in the playoffs. Um, I think he's done everything he can to prove it. It's just a matter of can you put the right lineups around him and really put the requisite shooting. Um, and I think that's the big thing for him because otherwise, if you got even one guy that doesn't necessarily really space the floor, yeah, you, got, I mean, you him see and it instantly. Did not work out. Yeah, and it's just and like there's been some lineups where he's the third best shooter on the floor, and that also doesn't work out. I don't like it. I, I don't love it. And, you know, I mean, you can't, I don't even know if you can play him with like TLC. Like I just, you know, and right now they're running with the bench. I, I, I don't know what, I, I could be completely wrong about this. So I, I'm going to put a big disclaimer. I haven't, um, I haven't loved it. I, I haven't hated it. I just, I, I think it's been, um, it's just, he's gone through a lot of changes, I think through this year, um, especially with the team just getting bigger. And I'm just curious to see, what that means for him now it's it's hard to judge right now because there's no Harden. so that's the other disclaimer i'd like to throw out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then with jeff too to move on to jeff green right obviously d'antoni has a big influence on his play especially offensively you know but what's what has stand out to about green the most to you this season and then when you look kind of like you could look at glimpses of the houston right three-point shooting was always there especially from the corners whatever the case is but now like with the Nets, he's playing with more of an aggressive, being that aggressor. So what kind of has stood out to you just about Jeff Green's overall game this season? I like that he can shoot in any situation. You know, mm -hmm. you look at the numbers and say, wow, he's having a great shooting year. But you also, like, he's 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 another guy that's really had a lot of roles change. You know, at, at certain points, he's like the pick and pop big. So he'll set a screen for Harden. Harden will swing it back to him and make the top of the – the uh, top of the arc three. Um, then other times when he's in different lineups, you know, you're playing him next to like Claxton. He's in the corner. He's still making those shots too. I think that's really impressive. You're in different situations where sometimes you're stand still, sometimes you're on the move and it doesn't seem to phase him. And I think for that reason, I've just been impressed. Like that's, you know, it's a three point shooting. Like it doesn't, you know, you even when you ask like certain guys about like, oh, why are you shooting the ball better? They don't really know. And like a lot of times it is just sort of kind of like chance in a lot of ways. But yeah, I think with him, like that's that's been the cool thing to watch is he's just able to do it in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, to go with Jeff, right, with that aggressiveness, when he drives to obviously a lot of it is cont like contested layups and stuff. But why do you like does it stand out to you at all that this guy's trying to like post it a lot of people? Yeah, I mean, he because uh, he's shooting the ball so well, guys are closing out to him hard, and I think yeah. he's just, you know, he wants he wants to rise up like he's, you know, I mean, he's in the I don't I don't even want to say the twilight years. I actually think he can play for quite a while, but for him, like you know, he's he's on the other side of his prime, and it's cool. I like it. I like to see a guy really want to throw down dunks like every game. It's kind of nice. I don't feel like the Nets have had a lot of guys like that over the last uh, however many years. It's like, who was the dunk guy before that? Like, I don't know yeah, if they had anybody. That's it. Yeah, it would have to be the two centers, but, like, they haven't had a guy that's, like, a non-center throwing down dunks. And it's clearly <laughs> – now you have Kyrie throwing down dunks. Um, Bruce has had a nice couple of dunks. Like, it's pretty fun. They got some dunkers this year. Yeah, yeah, they got some box office little shows. But – and then lastly, like, let's, let's touch on Joe Harris, right? So we we know his – his three point shooting, right? Highlights everything. But he, he's a cutter, you know, he's 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 implemented, he's changed his game a little bit since last season, right? But w when you look at his overall game moving forward, do you find anything that's like, okay, maybe he should develop this a little more? Or do you think it's more so like how how would you gauge that? Passing. Passing, yeah. Easy. It's it's again, it's the easy answer. Uh he's been doing it since I started covering him. He's the the king of getting caught in the air. He does it less, but he still does it where he'll jump and it'll just be like, I don't know what. I, I also feel like when he drives, I like, first off, it, it's great that he drives closeouts. That's great. Like if a guy closes out to him hard, he's going to go to the basket. That's like, that like completely opens up his game because he's not just like a, I don't know, uh, 
let's say Duncan Robinson from earlier in this year, because I know Duncan Robinson's playing better now, but you know, where it's like you kind of he can't really handle, so you sort of know what he's gonna do. If you can just keep up with him, you can kind of shut him down. Or like Kyle Corver from a couple of years ago um, yeah. on that Atlanta team. Like that's a guy, it's like he's not really gonna handle, he's not gonna do anything. So just glue somebody to him and he's pretty much he's not gonna be a factor. So love the joke, put the ball on the floor. Don't think he's having quite as good of a year as he did last year. But the big thing for him is I feel like when he drives, he's just sort of like you can see it in his head. He's like, all right, I'm going to do the up and under or I'm going to you know, take the, the mid-range pull up, which is a shot I like for him a lot. Doesn't feel like he has the idea of like, I'm just going to read the situation and, and make and either take a shot or make the pass out. Um, it just sort of seems like he's like programmed that in there before he's even seen what the defense is giving him. So I uh, that would be my big thing with him. It's a minor thing. It's not a huge deal. You don't need this guy to be, I don't know. You don't need him to be your your point. What, what do you even want to call that? A point, <laughs> points, point catch and shoot guy? I don't yeah, know. Like, like, I don't even know. <laughs> and I was like, well, Jeff Green's shooting threes off the dribble now. So I was just like, yeah. That that one caught me a little by surprise. But with Joe, I guess my final question with Joe before I swing it back to Doug, it's mostly a softball underhand question, you know, but do you think he's worth every penny of that contract? Got to be. Got to be. I, you know, I think it's funny. People want to pull him out of the starting lineup, um, which I get. I think he's good in any role. I just really like him when you got the big three out there. I mean, he's just like, that's the guy that that teams are leaving open. Like, teams are helping off Joe Harris. That's crazy to think that's about. First play of the game. You see it all the time. Conceptually, yeah, that's crazy. So. Yeah, and, they, and, and I think, like, you get him going. I actually, honestly, like, they're, the big thing, if I can nitpick anything lately, is, like, I – kind of think you guys should go to him a little bit more. I think the offense comes yeah. out a little bit slow and it's like, why don't you like, that's so lethal when you have, you know, uh, if you're, if you're a team and your sharpshooters already going and that's putting the pressure on the defense. Like well, last night's a good example of that. They didn't get him going. He had to try and create his own shots and that's not his bread and butter. No, like, as we not. saw those forced passes to LaMarcus. Yeah, no, definitely not. And like, that's the thing. Like you look at, um, like the Warriors game or from a couple weeks ago, however, that might've been two months ago, uh, the Bucks game, which was a great game. They went to him. They were drawing up sets specifically for him. A lot of it was in pick and roll with Harden, which again, you can't do right now, but little things you can do like that. I would run something for him like every single time to start the game. Cause you just, I feel like it's such a, such a shot in the arm to just like your first shot as a Joe Harris, like all net it's three. Awesome. It's just yeah. exhausting, you know, yeah. for opposing teams. Like, that's the thing. And we see it with Joe, too. Like, if his three-point shot's not falling, he'll start cutting a little more, getting kind of just seeing the ball go in the basket a little bit, and then he'll start to hit some shots, too. Yep. But, um, all right, Douglas, all you. Yeah, and last thing I got to say, is he more than a shooter? Can we finally get people around the world, around the universe, to finally say that? It's a good defender. He's a pretty good defender. I mean, he has his limitations, but, man, that's a that's a really solid defender I like. Just like what I saw this year. It's cool. I, I feel like that take's starting to get some traction now, which is good. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, to absolutely. It's fan base, though, because with the supporting cast around it, it's going to be hard to like for people to realize, hey, this guy's more than a shooter, you know? Yeah. That's where it all is going to come down to. If this was like 2018 Nets and he was doing all this, then people would start to realize. But with the supporting cast, talent around, obviously, his plays a little foreshadowed, but his impact isn't. But – that's kind of like what I think. Yeah, no, definitely. I just don't want him to see him at the shooting guard because defensively that's not his pr- uh, perimeter game anymore. Yeah. Too big. It's too too beefy now. <laughs> yeah. He's like a oh, small yeah, tight yeah. end or something. I don't know. But anyway, so the Nets are about to get their big three back. Although when I wrote this, Harden was healthy. So after playing only six games, what are you looking forward to most? Well, now I guess 7-Eleven is open for business. Slushies are being served. So uh, what are you looking forward to with the at least having 7-Eleven back open and what kind of lineups do you want to see Coach implement? And uh, obviously this answer answers it well because this was before Alizé Johnson was signed, so that was the final move to be made. So take it how uh, you like. Yeah, no, I, I uh, think the fun part is that in the time that the big three played, I think that Kyrie and, and Harden's chemistry has improved a ton. They've just learned how to play together. They kind of have that on guard, off guard type of thing. They're trading off possessions. You know, sometimes it's Kyrie pushing in transition. Other times you have Harden, you know, I guess like igniting things from the pick and roll. So that's going to be pretty fun. Like we, that's a built in chemistry that you're then adding KD, who is like 
the ultimate sweetener. I mean, <laughs> this guy, like, he's just, it's crazy. You got this seven footer that's coming off pin downs. Like he's freaking JJ Redick. Like it's, it's crazy that, to see. So um, yeah, I think that's going to be super fun. Like just to see that in the mix with KD. I, I, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. I, 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 I don't say scary hours that much, <laughs> but it's going to be pretty, it's going to be a little scary. Like it's, it's going to yeah. be something. Oh, definitely. What kind of lineups do you want Steve to implement more? I know it's, he's a very matchup heavy based coach, especially when he does the defense, offense, offense, defense stuff. But like what kind of things do you want to see? Let's say when we're fully healthy minus Dimwitty, although we haven't closed the door on his return yet. Well, first off, Dinwiddie would help. Uh, I do think there's room for another guard, which would be nice. Um, like what are some of your ideal closing lineups? Not even just starter, because you know at the end of the day, what matters most is how we close. Yeah. Um, I like the Jeff Green at the five closing lineup. I thought yeah. that was effective all year. I don't see a reason to change that. I haven't seen anybody. I mean, I guess you could throw in Claxton if you're if you're trying to preserve a lead, but I don't even think scheme wise, like. I don't think you should be trying to protect leads. I think you should be trying to build on it. So, yeah, I mean, I think that closing lineup makes sense. Got a pair of Blake and Clax. I just think that's the move. Um, I've not enjoyed Blake and LaMarcus. It's just two Slow. stiff old dudes that don't really <laughs> don't really do too much on defense, even though I like them both individually in certain matchups. I don't like them together. So that's, that's a big no. Um, and I think like Harden is in those bench lineups. I'm, you know, the starting lineup kind of is what it is. I'd really like KD and, and Aldridge together. I'm fine with Aldridge being the starter. I don't think there's a huge rush to throw Claxton in. Seems like it's more important to pair him with people that make him better. So if you're running your bench, you're going to probably, I would take out Harden early and then reinsert him when you have your bench in so that you're having him play with, um, with Blake. And you're doing little dribble handoff things, whatever you want to do with that. But then you're also using Claxton as like the role guy. That 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 to me makes a lot of sense. Then from there, it's just you're sprinkling in your Tyler Johnsons, your Landry Shamets. Those are just you know, they're like you know, it's toppings on a pizza. Like they're they're gonna shoot three balls, and that's that's gonna be what it is. But I think the big thing that Nash needs to figure out, and I think it's not set in stone, but it's clear. It's just those front court rotations. I mean, yeah. that's what it really comes down Be to. The curious case of DeAndre Jordan from being hated to being, how will he do now with fresh legs? Household name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, driving me crazy. I can't do it. I can't do it, man. <laughs> that's the thing. And then, and then, like, okay, so looking ahead, right, you got, what, 18 games left in the season at the time of this recording, and holding down, you know, they, uh, in my opinion, they need that one seed, right? Home court advantage for this team is going to be – I think that's a really big difference maker, especially in the Eastern Conference to just get out. But well, how many games do you – obviously, we they got a pretty light remaining schedule. They don't have, like, two of a rigorous schedule. Obviously, there's a couple back-to-backs thrown in there. But, like, what do you – how many games do you expect them to kind of win out of this 18-game stretch? I also exempt uh, tomorrow's Timberwolves game just because <laughs> by the time this is released, it's Wednesday. So Yeah. I think they'll go slightly over 500. I think they're going to slow down with a Harden. Pretty – Pretty simply, I think that's what it's going to come down to. Um, maybe I'll be wrong. I actually think losing the way they did to the Lakers could be good. Like I think they've been kind of due for a loss where they, because they've looked. Let's be honest, they have started. They've started really slow for like we're approaching like it feels like two months of doing this, where it feels like the same game over and over. So I think maybe that could help. But I, I man, look like Harden's such a floor raiser. He really is. So. Yeah. Without him in the fold, I do think they slip a little bit. They're not going to go under 500. I, I, there's too much talent there to, for that to happen. But or I mean, in the 18 games, I don't think they're going to like, you know, go 500 in that span. It would be impossible to go the other way. <laughs> but um, but no, I think like it. I could see it slipping a little bit. I don't think they're going to be winning game after game after game the way they have. Mm-hmm. And then you know, playoffs, exciting time for both of us. You know, a lot of eyes on the work. So how are you going to be preparing for him? I'm going to really, so I don't know how long we have, but I think we have a nice long time because of all these makeup games, which by the way, best part of the net season, it's not Harden, it's not KD, it's not Kyrie, it's not LaMarcus, it's that there's been no makeup games. <laughs> That's yeah. the best part for me. We got the playing tournament too. We this is great. And watch. This is great. So I get to watch basketball for a week. Um, I think what I'm going to spend my time with is watching, probably re-watching some games, um, I might really, really prep. Like, depends how much time we have. 
If I got it all day. Then we like, have like five playoff preview for eight. every team, every possible scenario. Usually I'll collaborate with somebody. I'll be like, oh hey, let's, you know, whatever. If they were playing the the heat, I'll be like, hey man, like let's do a let's collab, even though we kind of avert like no, I'm going in, I'm watching these games. I'm coming away with takeaways. I'm gonna be looking for things. So if that all works out, that's how I'm gonna be prepping. Um and I think it it all just matters with time. That's all. That's the that's the that's big that's thing this year. To say like it's the time, the window. Yeah, you get these big ideas what you want to do this year, and then you know <laughs> you got you got a game every day or every other day. It's like, well, I guess I'm not gonna do this project, or I'm just I'm gonna do this thing differently. Rounds exactly all that stuff. Crazy. And then, yeah, and then obviously the windows of times so we don't know until. Literally that day or <laughs> yeah. up thirty one AM the day of. So we yeah. don't know. But looking ahead, right? What matchups would you like to see the Nets kind of come out with the playoffs? Obviously, you know, it's a matchup based team, but and with that playing tournament, got I don't even know who's gonna come out of that. You know, it's it's gonna be one of those that's <laughs> I don't know. I can tell you little of advantage, but you know, at the same time those seven and eight seeds are dropping a little bit and with these last the remaining games left it's clear what teams will drop and what teams will rise you know obviously i don't think the hornets are going to stay where they are i think they're going to kind of start to keep on it. winning though but, but <laughs> the thing, like i don't know it's so confusing like pj washington's been he's been a wash and the same other team guys yep. on that team like terry and them but what 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 is what's the matchups that stick out right away to you uh, if you're a Nets fan, you don't want the Bulls because then you have to play Vucevic. Uh, me personally, I would love the Bulls because I want good series. So yeah, that's how if I, I can, if I can pick, I'm picking the Bulls, I'm picking the Bucks, and I'm picking the Sixers. Like I so want you're speaking oh, like the yeah. biggest front courts. I'm trying to see great series. I'm not trying to sit here and watch the Nets. Like if they play the Knicks, and this is not even me. I mean, for anybody that's listening doesn't know, I'm not like a big. I I'm not a Nets fan. I'm a Timberwolves fan growing up. So. I'm not. I like the rivalry. I think it's fun, but I'm not yeah, like not this is guy. not a. It's not a Knicks taunt. Like this is not a taunt. Legitimately, if they play the Knicks, I don't want to. I don't want to watch like the last two games of that series. That's a four game series. Mm-hmm. Anybody that's saying anything otherwise has not been watching these games. They haven't been watching the Knicks lately. It's I, there's no re- that, like, there's just no reason the the Knicks are what like bottom three in scoring and like I'm sorry if you're gonna beat the Nets you have to be able to score better than you know, 28th in the league. So it might be fun. It might be physical. I bet you there'd be a good game one. It would kind of feel like, like the actually perfect, the Nets Raptors last year, the game one of that series where it's like, ooh, a little feisty, but then slows down. The Nets are just going to win that. So I think that's a series where they're going to win. I think the Bulls would be fun. Who else we got? God, the East is so bad. Pacers, like maybe the Pacers could challenge them a little bit. But if it's like the Knicks, like – Nah, this is not even going to be close. Magic Magic drops since they traded, obviously they traded house, but what are they right now? 11? Who? You're not having me pull up. Magic are way down. They're like 14th. Yeah, they dropped bad. They dropped bad. Yeah. Hornets would be a bad matchup too, like just in terms of like I'm not interested unless they get LaMelo back, which it seems like they're kind of – Maybe the Raptors will pull up after That's a fun matchup. That's a fun matchup. Because they recently got – what's his name from um, the Magic? Oh, Gary Trent? No, Birch. Oh, I was going to – well, Blazers, yeah, Trent. But I Birch. would love to see Gary Trent exactly. dropped a forty ball. Yeah, you know, not, I was like, "What is going on?" So well, I would, I would pay money to see Bruce Shea collapse the matchup. I would, I would, oh yeah, yeah. and I don't oh, anticipate. I I'm curious between like the Miami and Boston how they will fare, like their final seedings, because I don't know if Atlanta is going to stay where they are or they're going to head to the playoff play-ins. Same as you mentioned already, the Hornets. Like it's very yeah. interesting. Play-ins really spice things up. Anybody that's like like the Celtics just seem like, what does that go five? Like I, I and maybe I'm I, that sounds blasphemous, but like they're literally just the Nets. Like in terms of makeup, they're just worse. Like really, they don't have centers. Really, I mean, I guess the Nets have better big rotation now, but it's like they got a, a point guard that could play off ball a little bit. Uh, I mean, he's just discount. <laughs> Kevin's just got to discount Kyrie. Like that's pretty much what they Ooh, did. They filled that spicy. hole. Hey, that's what happened. Like. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest like that's what happened and it's just like they they tried to fill that role and uh and you know tatum's really good guess what kd's better i just yeah. that series doesn't scare me at all uh, heat is fun heat are pretty fun yeah, um it would be fun it's... heat would be fun bam was really good against the nets and i know that was like an abnormally good bam game um which sounds like a, a 
a, a snub, but it's not. Um, yeah, it's an abnormally good BAM game. And, and Jimmy's going to be fun. So that's a fun setting. But yeah, no, the Celtics are like, I don't know. I would not be interested in that series at all. Yeah, it's, no, I wouldn't be that. And then before before Doug asked you the finals prediction, one thing one thing I wanted to ask you too was, um, do you think the NBA's got a, a fish a refing problem? You know, with kind of the softness. I grew at least. I mean, you, I know we're probably on the same page of this. I I grew up playing hardball. You know, like yeah. it's, it's that simple, right? So, and you're my you're like around my height, so you know we probably played identical stuff, whatever the case was. But like. Do you think do you think it's coming a little too soft? You know, Adam Silver's NBA is a little soft. Dude, I so one of my my great golden rules is I try not to complain about the officials. That's I really do. I'm the Don't same. Worry, I'm actually annoying about it. I'll be like, I'll I'll tweet something like, oh, I hate. I, why are we complaining about the officials? Which is so annoying. Yeah. That's probably something. <laughs> uh, but you know, with uh with the officials this year. Man, I've broken that rule a couple times. I'm like, dude, I can't. Like, what are we doing? That game yesterday with throwing out, like, as bad as it was to throw out Kyrie, in that moment, I was like, man, throwing out Schroeder might hurt more because I don't know yeah. who's going to handle the ball. And it turns out it's THT, which, I mean, there you go. I guess I'm eating my words on that one, too, when I said <laughs> they should they should have traded him for Lowry. But, yeah, man, um, it's, it's bad. They got to figure it out. I don't Thank know what's know. going on. I don't know if it's the lack of fans. Um, you know, you're hearing a little bit more of the the back and forth, yeah. um, hear a little bit more of the dialogue thrown their way. I don't know if that's what it is, but they, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's well, not I mean, great. Chris and I were talking before you hopped on, like if the Marcus, I'm sorry, not Marcus, Markeith Morris, I, yeah, Markeith Morris, you know, flagrant one, that, that play happened after the John, it would have been a flagrant two. Oh yeah. Like it oh, set yeah. the tone. Because it was on Irving, too, and, yeah, that would have been a flagrant, too, and stuff. But, like, it's just – it comes down to just, like, you got to let the guys play a little bit, you know, especially in that type of – it's a nationally televised game, potential finals preview, you know, all the narratives are behind it and stuff like that. But Matt made a great point with the audience, you know. You start to hear the actual words said, whatever the case was. If you look at the pool report, how they kind of summed it up, it was more of, like, okay, we separated them, and then they continued to go at it. It wasn't anything, like – physical or any like okay it could escalate quickly yeah it was more so that it kind of just dragged on and i think they got tired of it and that zach zarber got a little was like all right you know what let's just get him out of here whatever the case was but you know it's it's going to be interesting you know in the playoffs they should really let it slide like we, we've seen the ejections over the season with the ball tossing jj with jj reddick we've seen just some wacky ones overall yeah the refs but, like, are here to facilitate the game they're not there to control the game the players control the game. They're the ones with the balls in their hand, not the refs. Well, that's not what Kevin Durant said yesterday, but like, I don't know what's it called. I don't know. It's it's one you, of those. He didn't want to get fined. Well, yeah, Smart. Well, yeah. It's he already well, got fined. This <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> enough. So I'm interested to see Kyrie gets a little fined too, because you know with the NBA with players not leaving the court in a timely manner, they ex- the NBA expects like players, okay, you're tossed. All right, let me just go to the locker room right now. It's like no, they don't get that say or whatever the case is yeah it'll be interesting to see if Kyrie does get a little money attached to whatever the case is but I don't know like they got to fix something if this if this level of officiating comes around with the playoffs too it's not gonna the ratings will drop well that's a thing too you know I know especially like my dad you know he's like the old head basketball guy that likes to watch it and he's he even said it himself he's like I don't like watching this style of NBA basketball because it's just too soft and like that, yeah. that's what it comes down to. Like he, well, he grew up with the Kevin McHale days. And I mean, like the fact that the Jong's one thing, what they say is another thing. But yeah, like what they say the other day, obviously, like me and Doug, we were, we were talking about it. You know, we saw the little, um, like, um, Captions, what, what, what John Boy does, but the NBA version of it, with they kind of just like lip read and kind of put the sentences together, whatever the case is. But I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to see how it kind of just all pans out. Playoffs, you got to let them play because literally, if that ejection did happen in the playoffs, then obviously, if that's it, well, regardless, that happened in the playoffs. That's I mean, and those game. are the worst examples. Like the summer soft or the tiki tacky fouls, where like sometimes they'll do a playthrough when it's not a playthrough, or one player will get a three point foul and the other one won't on the exact same play. So yeah, like that, that kind of stuff, I don't get. That. I don't know. There's multiple elements, but. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so finally, who do you want to see in the NBA Finals and why? And because you are a biased Minnesota fan, you don't have to say the Nets. Oh, 
No, I want the Nets in the finals. Why would I not want the Nets in the finals? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to cover a finals. Uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, your, your, your media bias. I was like, you know. Hey, no, no. I want the Nets in the finals. Nets are awesome, too. Like, how do you not want this team in the finals? They're, that's so – it's so lame if they lose in round two. Can you imagine? You oh, got man. this ridiculous yeah. – Like, it. yeah, this team's – I mean, this team is – not only are they super talented, they're fun to watch, they move the ball well, like, I, I, I mean – some people will disagree. I think they're great for the NBA. I mean, great, especially with the NBA box being office, an offensive league. You know, with all that persona behind. NBA it. needed a villain, like they really yeah. did. They needed a villain, like as good as the Lakers were last year. Like they weren't. They never really had that like villain status. People were doubting them the whole way. Do you um, wish that the Nets took on a more of a villain approach, like with body language and stuff, or where, is it kind of just like, all right, I'm chill with kind of. Yeah, they're all just. I think goodbyes. it's kind of cool. Right I think now. it's. I think it's kind of cool that they don't like. Like they just don't give a damn about it, and I I think that's kind of cool. I like, just work something... here. Yeah, the like there's some, they have a little the fire about mentality. That. But um, I think we got our finals matchup yesterday. That's a, I you know I wasn't sure what I was gonna think of the Lakers this year. I just wasn't. I wasn't sure what the, um, you know, just with the the workload that they're coming off of. But it's fundamentally like <clears throat> just two contrasting styles. I mean, the Lakers are such a good defensive team, and I think. Watching that last night, I'm I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, they, they have nobody. They got like Alfonso McKinney playing real rotation minutes in an NBA game. Alfonso McKinney, like this guy, I this is like a guy that I remember Warriors Twitter were like killing this guy every time he was out there, you know. And it was like, oh, at least he can grab offensive rebounds and sort of play defense. But this guy's out there like making plays, and I it's just it's a really good system. Um, Vogel's done a really good job. And they are the complete opposite of the Nets. I mean, they literally are the defense team. They're going to make everything difficult. The Nets are just the overwhelming offensive team. Maybe, maybe the best offensive team we've ever seen. So yeah. you put those two together. And mind you, like that Lakers team we watched in the bubble, that's one of the best defensive teams I've watched since. How far back do we have to go? Uh, I think I think they were better probably than the Heat. Um, I was going to say with, he, Orlando, maybe with Dwight, you know, back maybe, then. But like, it, you got to go way back. Like that was a crazy good defensive team. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of those Spurs teams, I guess. And then you Spurs, could go Pistons. Spurs, a little bit of the Celtics in there with Tony, you know, those, yeah. were, those were good shows, but. But dude, that's a, like, that team was so good on like, so good, like just ridiculous and, and crisp and even KCP's making plays. And uh, it's just like. They they run a really tight ship there, and you I just I don't know I mean it's it sounds like a, a one game overreaction, but they've proved it last year, and you see it yesterday. It's like oh yeah, like this team kind of they know what they need to do. It's it's very it's, in a lot of ways it's actually a little netsy. It reminds me of when the Nets will be down guys, and they'll you know I, I guess especially in like the bubble and stuff like that. But it's like yeah, this team is kind of gonna do what they need to do. So so six or seven game series, and how do you think it? goes through like how do you think these games like close games anything occasional blowout or yeah i think there'd be a couple blowouts that's a weird that feels like a weird series um kind of feels like first couple of games these teams because they haven't really seen each other at full strength like even no. yeah. even though the nets see them on wednesday no harden that's a big factor obviously that means a couple of things it means uh simmons is going to primarily be guarding Kyrie, and i think he'd probably get the harden matchup which is what i would do by the way um, just because Harden's the guy that initiates everything. So that's a different mix. Now you look at the game earlier in the year. Um, I think we, t- we talked about this before we started uh, doing this podcast. Like they didn't have Seth Curry. I know it's just Seth Curry, but he's the like floor spacer. Like that's the guy that's going to give them the juice that they need to measure out, like to really, you know, even out in terms of being a great defense and like a pretty good offense. Like it's, it's, it's just, I don't know. They're, they're an interesting team. I think that would be a nice little back and forth. Two teams that are built differently. That's all I want. I want the Nets to play teams that are – like, I don't want them playing the Celtics. I don't, I don't want that matchup. I don't want even – I don't think I want them playing the Jazz. I don't like, want that, no. Come on, man. Like, this is going to be – it's well, going to be a three-point shootout. Well, that the playoff become less about motion and more about ISO. Yeah. And we have three of the best ISOs, and Jazz has maybe one really solid ISO in Donovan. So. It's, it's super boring. I mean, and you know what? The Nuggets would be fun. Um, that would be a good Nuggets matchup. Nuggets would be real. I good. want to see those two play each other, yeah. Jazz and Nuggets, so badly. Oh yeah, that was great. That was great last year. I think that'd be really fun. Um, 
And then, I mean, the Clippers have been good games. Again, just kind of the same thing with the Nets. Yeah, this year we can't get that Clippers-Lakers snub. Oh, no, we need that. We need that big time. They've been really good, by the way, in terms of... Slip that condo edition's really paying good. I am eating my words. I am so mad about... You I want, eat uh, my words most, every uh, time on Rondo, and I don't know what I'm going to learn. It's... I, I got to tell you, I have had so many misses. I love... I long. think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Like, uh, I had some Tyler Johnson takes and what people were unearthing. I'm like, That's true, honestly, the ones. put these up there. Like, these are terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, I... Look... It's Life's like, too short to pretend like you're right about everything. Like I've been wrong so often that yeah. it's that's the fun of this. You learn and you grow and exactly. it's basketball. It's like playoff, playoff Rondo's like TLC out of the rotation. Like you're like, all right, throw TLC out of the rotation. He's out of the rotation, has a bounce back game. And then like it's literally like you could simulate those a little bit, obviously very differently. But with Rondo, you just can't I don't know, you just can't count that out. Like, you know, it's just it's just different energy, you know? It's like one of those it's like I guess you could say, like, you know, it's kind of like Blake winning team. You're playing for yeah. something now. You're kind of rejuvenated a little bit. But I don't know, man. It's Clippers are more of an interesting case with me. Like, I don't know if they have enough. I don't think they're going to get past the Lakers. I think that'll be a five game series. I don't think it's going to go more than that. Wow. I, you can put that. Wow. In. I'm sticking yeah. with that one. I'm sticking with that one. I, I think it's a five game series. I still feel they like played the them pretty well. I still feel like I, the Clippers did more well, than I just for the last like, season, though. I don't know. I just feel like Lakers, you know, they, especially when you think about the Lakers in the West, too, they're going to want – they they're, they're going to battle it out throughout the West, you know. And, like, with the East, too, like I mentioned before with you guys, too, like, Matt, you even hit it, too. It's not going to be a cakewalk to the finals for the Nets in the East. Not no. at all. Like, it's not going to be portrayed like that. I'm a realist like that. I'm not ready to walk. Like, yeah, I'm thinking about where the coolest parade would go, and someone said it best, start a grand – Army Plaza, past Barclays Center, and go to Borough Hall where they did the introduction of Brooklyn's backcourt all those years ago. Oh God, that that traffic's gonna be so brutal. Like you don't understand. Like that. Oh man. And you know for a fact, like you guys know, if there was a parade in Brooklyn, there would be a lot of Knicks fans going in there just to troll. There would be a lot. No, they'd be pretending to be Nets fan. We're gonna see Spike Lee there. I don't know, dude. You're gonna see a feisty parade. I'm telling you right now, if that did happen. Like, I've, I already know a couple of Knicks fans that are like, yeah, if this happens, like, we are going in. Like, I've, I've heard it. Like, I've, I've been in a group oh, chat. Oh, man, I have such a good joke for that, but I'll save it. Well, yeah, you know, if they could, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's but like, anyways, I don't know if there's much more to say before we start rambling yeah, on like we did before the pod for almost two hours. But, Matt, thank you again for joining us, taking your time, uh, time of your day. You know, Barista Brooks is back at it again, <laughs> serving up some brunch. Some nice brunch talk, and uh, thank yeah. you for joining Chris and I. So just let everyone know where to follow you. I mean, you're that popular, so we shouldn't have to come to this. But out of respect to you and your brand, take it away. Nice little plug. That popular. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about all of that. Um, you can find me at Matt Brooks NBA. I'm getting Rondo takes wrong. I'm getting Tyler J- Johnson takes wrong. I'm getting I'm getting all types of takes wrong. So that's where you can find those terrible takes. Follow my YouTube as well. That's the main thing right now. I got to plug. Um, yes, you know, sure. that's that's also at you know Matt Brooks NBA. Please do subscribe. I've been doing a lot of video work lately. It's um, true about how the Brooklyn front court isn't a problem. And here we are. It looks like crap. The, like the first game we get after I put out that video out. So there we go again. <laughs> another take aging uh, just perfectly. <laughs> but yeah, follow you know follow those two things and keep up with me and Chris. We're a uh, we're doing we're doing the dang thing this year, doing the Nets sure. coverage. So that's sure. that's the big thing to plug right there. And all those plugs will be in the description below. But guys, remember send over any suggestions, questions, comments, thoughts, or on any of our content by sending an email to wingspanpodcast at gmail.com. And do not forget to follow us on our social media accounts. Most importantly, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on your preferred listening service. As for next time, stay classy. Take care, wear a mask, get vaccinated, you know, all that good stuff. Yes, sir. He's got one. Bo, let's go.